Today's flip through is the classic Cosmos by Carl Sagan. The Cosmos series came out in 1980, and I was a young lad at the time, probably, uh, I don't know, uh, nine years old at the time. PBS, Public Television, had broadcasted this Cosmos special, and 500 million people had watched this, um, a science special, the most of any special of its time for science. This book later went on to sell close to a million copies. And uh, it is one of your doorways into the scientific community. Uh, why? Because as we flip through here in a few minutes, you're going to understand the, that Carl Sagan is, is almost like a poet, philosopher of science. Uh, his vocabulary is, is so extensive and infectious. You, you'll, you'll feel like you're speaking in tongues after reading this because you want to speak differently. And why? Well, he allowed those that were, um, whose mathematical, we'll say, ineptitude pre prevented them from going into science in the first place. He welcomed you in. And if you were a flat earther, he helped dispel this erroneous way of thinking without making you feel saddened by your asininity. Uh, in fact, you would feel a harmonious, you know, um, connection to the rest of humanity and nature after he dispelled some of your, your notions. And that's why Sagan is just considered um, such a masterful writer and uh, just a, a wonderful human being. So I'm just going to flip through, but I'm going to tell you right now, this is the book that you should start your journey back into science with. And again read two pages a night before you go to bed. You'll have sweeter dreams, you'll feel better, and you'll wake up happier, I promise you. So let's go through a, a quick flip through. By the way, this is the edition that um, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson gives a forward, and then Ann Duran, uh, who, Duran, uh, who was his wife and helped with the Cosmos series, uh, she also gives a forward, and they're both beautiful. And uh, they're worth reading. A lot of times people skip the forward. Don't. Um, chapter 1, The Shore of the Cosmic Ocean, telling our place in the, um, in the universe. Skepticism. He starts off right away about how to appropriately be skeptical of ideas. I wonder if I can do this without glasses. Um, and then he just gives facts that you just find enjoyable about the cosmos. And, um, no, no chance. Um, goes through what everyone likes about space and um, eloquent uh, description of Earth. Um, again, the vocabulary. Sometimes I would need to stop and look up these words because they were so powerful in context, but I had never heard them before. Um, he goes on. Uh, some of this is a little bit dated for some of the ideas back in the 70s and 80s um, that were popular, such as the face on Mars and stuff that no one talks about anymore because it's such a silly idea. But um, he allows you to come to that conclusion without feeling, um, you know, that, that your, your fallacious idea was uh, the result of ignorance, even though it was, right? But whatever. Um, and then he goes through talking about uh, life and how life starts, the Stanley Miller experiment, uh, harmony of the worlds. You can imagine it's again about space, uh, stars, and uh, uh, of course, got to bring in some Einstein. Lots of history here. Uh, talks about Copernicus and Kepler, and he spends a lot of time on Kepler. And uh, He's influenced my way of thinking, and you, I think you'll come away with a real appreciation of Kepler. Um, Kepler felt God was a geometer, not um, a carpenter. Tycho uh, and others. A couple graphs in here, nothing too scary, right? But talks about um, Kepler's laws and uh, intelligent design, something that came back in the 90s and the 2000s. Nothing new, but how to handle that. And uh, heaven and hell, and Sagan absolutely talks about religion in here, and uh, he never uh, nitpicks, but
beliefs, but rather gives an alternate way of, of thinking of these stories. And I'm going to get a little closer here. Um, talks about math in a manner that is enjoyable, you know, really gives us ideas of what do these speeds and space mean, the sizes of masses. Uh, Bruno's in here, some other historical figures. Uh, talks about how we know what stars are made out of. I'll just keep going a little quicker. Blues for red planets. Uh, talks about Mars in great detail and Venus and why um, Venus is inhospitable to human life and how that ties in with, uh, at the time, was a, was a novel idea of climate change, uh, which, of course, we now know is, is correct. Talks about Wallace and Darwin and their um, spats. Um, Martian soil talks about uh, some chemical stuff. You know, if you ever want to know about hydrofluoric acid, you got a piece in here. Uh, in case you don't know, hydrofluoric acid, that is the acid that you want. Um, terraforming Mars. So it, why don't we take over Mars and why don't we live there? Is it possible? Traveler's Tale. Uh, remember, he, Carl Sagan, is going to help with the Voyager programs, sending the first satellites out into the solar system uh, for the sole purpose of <laughs> nearly entertaining the, the uh, entire human race. Talks about the history of the Dutch people and why Holland was such an uh, important scientific place, also for commerce. Um, uh, then he goes into Newton and uh, his ideas about light and why Newton is, is such an interesting guy in his own mind. Well, I'll just keep skipping. There are some, this is the updated uh, version of this book, and it's a smaller book. He's got some color pictures. The original Cosmos book from the 80s also has some color photography. Um, actually, I think these are the same pictures. One of the most famous pictures of the pale, uh, pale blue dot, Pythagoras, and, uh, you know, uh, how math and science work together and philosophy. Um, talked about slavery and, and why slavery is so egregious and how it was justified back in... I mean, you wouldn't think that some of this stuff would be in a science book, and yet it's so awesome. Of course, there's some of the um, constellations. Uh, not that that means anything, but how humans put meaning to patterns even when they don't deserve it. Um, looking into the past when we look into space. Um, and then, of course, he goes back to uh, some nuclear physics, uh, talking about how we know what we know about stars and um, supernova and the planets. And it's just fantastic stuff. So um, I'm not going to go on any further. Um, I, I, I would say if you had to pick one book to get started on your... Um, your journey back into science, or if you've never gone into science, this should be one of your very first books. Um, I, I promise you that if you read this book, you will be a happier, mentally healthier human being. So um, pick up a copy and uh, enjoy.